Advanced Financial Accounting Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to foreign currency translation. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area on the right side. So let's go through our information. We're going to do a foreign currency translation on 11X0P, the parent company, formed a foreign subsidiary that issued all of its outstanding common stock 2P. So the parent company then created a subsidiary. Subsidiary is now fully owned. Parent company has all of the stocks of the subsidiary. As of 11X0, the beginning of the year, we're going to do we're thinking consolidation at the end of the year and therefore we're gonna have to deal with this currency situation because the subsidiary is in a foreign country and is doing their books in the foreign currency and the parent company is in us dollars measuring their books in us dollars so we're gonna have to do some type of adjustment related to that so then we got our re relevant accounts for 2000 x1 and 2000 x2 that we will be dealing with foreign currency labeled with the LAK in front of it. The uh, the dollar will have just dollar, dollar signs. Exchange rates and the relevant dates will be here then. The accounts, uh, more detail for the accounts, including the accounts receivable, allowance for uncollectible accounts, then the inventory using the first in first out method going through the components of the inventory calculation for cost of goods sold, beginning inventory purchases available for sale, inventory at year end and cost of goods sold then more detail on the purchase of the purchases of property plants and equipment including land and equipment being purchased on 11x0 and then another purchase of equipment on 74x1 the depreciable life is going to be 10 years full year of depreciation taken in year of purchase on 11x0 the bonds issued the, per, the where the bonds were issued percent is going to be the 7%. I'm going to go ahead and indent this while we're here. Face value 120,000 matures on 115x6 interest paid semi annually July 15th and January 15th first payment made on July 15th 2000x0. Make make schedule translation the selected accounts into the US dollar. Local currency is the subsidiary's functional currency. So notice the main point here is we're using a translation. We want to compare and contrast this to a problem we did in the past, similar problem for a remeasurement. The translation, this one should be a little bit easier. So we're not going to use a lot of the data that we have here. Notice some of the data, some of the data we have here is going to be extra data because it's, it's designed to think about, you know, are we going to use historical cost or are we going to use basically the balance sheet uh, rate on it? So, and that's going to, we'll use historical costs more time, more on the remeasurement. Here, we're going to do the translation. Why are we doing a translation here? Because we have the foreign uh, company or the, we have the subsidiary, the fully owned subsidiary of the parent is doing business in a foreign country and they have their bookkeeping in the foreign currency. The normal question usually is then, well, is that foreign currency the functional currency or is the U.S. Uh, dollar, considering the parent company is in U.S. dollars, the functional currency? It is possible to have a third option that they're doing the books in a foreign currency that's not the functional currency or the U.S. dollar, but that's more that's not typical. Normally, you know, it's a foreign currency. They have their books in the foreign currency question being is the foreign currency the functional currency or is the U.S. dollar? In this case, we're saying the foreign currency is the functional currency. So, and you can look at more information in terms of what, how do you make that determination to whether or not, or which is the functional currency. But we're going to say here, we've made the determination that the foreign currency, the currency the books are being made in is the functional currency. And therefore the proper technique that we're going to use uh, is going to be translation rather than remeasurement. Now, this is going to be an easier process than a lot of this information uh, is not as relevant for the translation, so it's going so it's going to be a quicker problem than a prior problem we had for the remeasurement. But we want to be able to compare and uh, contrast these items. So let's going to go up top. We're going to say 2000. We're going to say uh, X zero first. So we'll pick up our our information for X zero. We'll take in basically the balance sheet accounts here. We're going to take the accounts receivable, and that's going to be the thirty seven thousand, thirty seven thousand, and and the basic the bottom line is typically. Uh, we will be using for the balance sheet accounts, asset and liabilities, at, at least the end of the time period, the balance sheet date as of the end of the date. Remember, if we have financial statements for the year ended, obviously the income statement represents the beginning to the end, the whole time frame, 
balance sheet represents as of a point in time at the end of the year. Therefore, you would think the default position would be to take the exchange rate at the end of the year for the balance sheet items, as not, not, not the equity might be different. But for assets and liabilities, that would typically be the case unless you're going to deviate from that to take the historical cost. On the translation, we will typically take that, his, that the balance sheet date. So that's what we're going we're gonna to be working with. So this will be a straightforward problem for the most part. Then we're looking for that date as of the end of the year. So that's going to be on included in here, 111X0 to 630, because 1231X0 is included in that range. We're going to then divide this out. This is the 37,000 divided by the 1.7. Then we're going to go to the inventory. So we'll do the inventory. And we're going to be picking up the 66,000. We're going to just pick up the same rate because this is a balance sheet account. And so what we're not doing as we would do as we saw in the remeasurement is looking for like when the inventory was purchased, we're just picking it up as of the end of the time period, which is at 1.7. So 1.7, we don't need the added information therefore related to this. Uh, the the accounts receivable oftentimes because it's measured basically kind of in in cash that is owed right usually a receivable is going to be received in cash also typically uses under both methods the balance the date at the end of the time period so we don't uh all we don't typically go in and <clears throat> look at when the receivables uh, are are taking place because we're going to get paid basically in cash inventories we may look on remeasurement at like the historical cost so then we're going to go to, what am I looking for? Where am I going? I just started hitting the arrows like randomly. So then we're going to be then saying this is going to be the 169,000. And once again, property plant, plants and equipment, if it were remeasurement, we would be looking at the date that we purchased it. But here we're doing the translation, which we're still just going to use the balance sheet date, the 1.7. The 1.7, let's divide that out. The 169 divided by the 1.7, 99,412. Then we'll take the long-term debt, long-term debt, similar process. Now in the remeasurement for the long-term debt, because once again, we're paying basically in cash, we still use the ending rate, usually the balance sheet rate at the end of the, um, at the end of the period. But that is clearly what we're going to use on the translation for sure. So we're going to take the 1.7. We'll take the 120,000 divided by the 1.7. And finally, the common stock. Now, this is part of the equity section. So this one will differ. This is not going to be exactly the same because the equity, remember, the purchase took place at the beginning of, uh, of the year, of the current year, 2000X0 of this year that we're looking at. And uh, so we're going to be using the date for that at when the purchase took place. It hasn't been any change. The common stock all went to the parent because the parent created the fully owned subsidiary at the beginning of 2000 x0 so we'll pick up that 150,000 we're looking for the rate at the beginning of 2000 x0 which is going to be this two so we'll pick that up then we'll divide this out this is going to be the 150,000 divided by that two and that's going to be the 75,000 Let's do the same thing for the accounts, uh, the, the year, the second year, 2000X1. We're going to pick up the accounts receivable for the second year. That's going to be the 42,000. Same process. We're just now going to use the rate at the end of the balance sheet date, given it's a translation. Once again, for the receivable, it's typically the same for the remeasurement and the translation. We're going to get paid in cash. So we, we're usually using the translation at the end of... Uh, the time period, the balance sheet date at the end of the year. So we're looking for the rate at 1231, which is going to be this 1.5, including the 1231X1 uh, date. We'll divide this out then. We're going to be picking up the 42,000 divided by the 1.5. There we have that. Then we're looking inventories. So we will pick up the inventories at the 71,000. Once again, we're going to be using that 1.5. This one would differ from the remeasurement process to the translation. Under remeasurement, we would possibly be looking for when the inventory was purchased. Translation, we're just going to use that ending balance sheet date. Once again, that same 1.5. So we'll then say we have the 71,000 divided by that same 1.5. Property, plants, and equipment, P, P, and E, depreciable assets. Same kind of process here. We're going to be saying that this is going to be equal to the 185,400. 
Once again, under the remeasurement process, we would then be looking for when we purchased the property plant and in the equipment. But under the translation process, we're just going to be using, once again, balance sheet date into the time period 1.5. So we'll take that 185,400 divided by the 1.5. So we get 123,600. Then we're looking long term debt, long term debt. This is something that we're going to pay typically in cash. And therefore, both remeasurement and translation typically will use the default balance sheet date, which is the end of the time period at the point in time that balance sheet takes place end of the period. So we're taking a long term debt for that 100. That's going to be once again, you probably guessed it. I'm sure you guessed probably guessed like the last three or five of them. That's going to be 1.5. So we're going to say the 100,000 divided by the 1.5. And finally, the common stock, the, the one kind of kind of glitch or tricky area because the common stock still, now it's the second year. This is, this is the thing that, that's different really than the last translation problems we've looked at as well because now we have two years. So we, we're now in the second year. Are we going to take the, 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 the rate at the beginning of the year or when the common stock was issued? We're actually looking when, when the common stock was issued, when the thing was, uh, when the subsidiary was created. And that's going to be basically at the beginning of 2000X0, not the beginning of 2000X1. So we're looking then this 150,000, we're picking up the two then down here because that includes 11X0 when the consolidation basically started. And we're going to sit, take that 150,000 divided by the two. And there we have our 75,000. So again, notice the, the rates here a lot kind of easier on the translation in that we're not, we're not breaking out those historic uh, items for assets and liabilities at least and then we have a little bit more difficulty with regards to the uh, the temporary accounts as well as the equity section we still have to to use something some varying rates some different rates